Thanks for joining us for What's New at CFI, where we bring you insights from our latest courses and behind the scenes conversations with subject matter experts. Get ahead and stay ahead with the latest from CFI. Welcome to the What's New at CFI podcast. I'm Asim Khan, subject matter expert and instructor. I'm joined by my colleague, Duncan McKean, who is also a subject matter expert and instructor. Welcome, Duncan. Thank you. Welcome. So, Duncan, you've been hard at work delivering courses on financial planning and analysis for our learners. Absolutely. Yeah, we've been uh, busy recording for for many, many weeks now. Excited to see them go live so that the the learners can get in there and start experiencing them. Right. Um, Last week, we spoke about the first installment of this course, which is the model design Mm -hmm. course. Um, And then recently, you completed... Uh, the course on uh, formatting and revenue forecasting. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Absolutely. Yeah, and we um, really the focus on the on the course is, is revenue forecasting. But the the reason that there's a decent amount of formatting in there is because it is the second course in the series, and we wanted to make sure that everybody that was watching had really good knowledge of of how formatting works in Excel and um, in terms of custom number formats, and also there's some work in there on conditional formats as well. Because we just find that it's models are not just about numbers. It's really important that they're properly formatted so that they're easy to read and easy to follow. And we we find that unformat or poorly formatted models can be very, very like overwhelming and, and sometimes just difficult to glean the information that you need from the model. No, I, I believe you've done a great job. I thought it was a the formatting bit of it was a master class. Oh, format. thanks, system. Yeah, oh, it really was, and I I I learned a thing or two. Oh, that's good. Especially that's great. The check boxes and the up and down arrows. Um, the the model actually tells a story. You could look at it, and without delving too deeply into the numbers, see what's going on. Hmm. Yeah. Thank that's you. It um big picture idea, and it gives you a big picture idea just. Just by looking at it, it certainly, yeah, it certainly does. And we, some of the um, features that are in that course are actually fairly new in Excel. Um, it, the check boxes have not been around too long. And one of the things that we did was we put in, we put in check boxes, but underneath them, they're actually um, binary switches, which sounds like a mouthful, but they're simply ones and zeros. And the reason that we use um, binary switches, essentially a one or a zero in a model, is because they help us keep the formulas so simple. And then instead of using an if function to see whether or not something is turned on or off, you literally just multiply through by the one or the zero. And of course, if it's a one, you're multiplying by one and then the number comes out as itself. And if you're multiplying by zero, it effectively zeroes that line item out. So it's a great way to turn certain features on and off in a model. And the um, the up and down arrows that we used came out at the same time as checkboxes, and um, they're super helpful because if you if you're forecasting something like let's say you're forecasting a salary across one row, and let's say that salary is seventy thousand um, dollars, the moment you change it, say up to seventy five thousand, you can put in a little up arrow indicating that there's been a change, so that then your eye goes straight to that that change, which can be really, really helpful. Just, I, I think you mentioned the idea that you can look at the model and, and understand what story it's telling. It really helps you to see where that change has happened. Yeah, no, and it, did, it absolutely does the trick. And um, I like the bit about the binary switches because, uh, you know, uh, if statements, as you know, can get unruly, unless you find some sort of elegant way around them, mm-hmm. the binary switches in this case do just that. Yeah, definitely. I agree with you that they can become unruly. And I found I found over years and years of using Excel that the good old if function is probably the most overused function in the software because people tend to, you see it used heavily often when people don't know about all the other amazing functions that are in the software. When, when you have a really wide vocabulary of, of the functions, you tend to use other ones and only revert to an if statement if absolutely necessary. Right. Okay. And we can now expect uh, some more courses from you. Now, what's out now? We've got uh, this revenue forecasting bit. Mm-hmm. 
Revenue forecasting. And the, the next one after that is headcount forecasting and analysis. So in this course, we're talking about in here, the revenue forecasting, we're really looking at the top line for the company. And then we start getting into the cost of goods sold where we're forecasting their own employees. And then after that one, we look at also cost of goods sold, but forecasting external contractors. Excellent, exciting stuff. And we'll have uh, podcasts coming up where we discuss those upcoming courses as well. Duncan, thank Absolutely. you so much for your time. Thanks for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the conversation. FinPod is brought to you by Corporate Finance Institute, the number one rated online provider of finance and banking training, certifications, and productivity tools.